feels like a whole new Paimon after those two days in the hot springs. The abyss kind of threw a wrench in our relaxation, though. Still, spending time here really has felt like a vacation. The Koholosaurs are so nice and so fun to play with. Their bellies are super bouncy. Oh, and Akea's snacks were so delicious. She gave Paimon some for the road just this morning, actually. Yelling at some kids who got caught throwing stones in the hot springs, so not much has changed since we first met her. Hey, you guys. Sleep well last night? Yep. This area is so nice. <laughs> Glad you like it. I was thinking of taking you guys out to do some sea fishing. Later tonight, we can eat whatever we catch. Fresh fish is absolutely delicious right off the grill. Hey, Mualani! Yeah? What do you need? The team sent out to fight in the Night Warden Wars has returned. And Kachina? Is she back as well? Kachina... fell in battle. But don't worry. The team was victorious, so the Rite of Resurrection will be held in the stadium soon. That's a relief. The Abyss is cunning, and it was her first time. Mistakes are bound to happen. Exactly. She deserves to hold her head up high. All right, thanks for letting me know. We'll head out in a bit. Jeez, she sounded a little anxious there. Had me thinking it was bad news for a moment. Mulani, you said the Abyss was cunning just now. But it seems like the Abyss just wants to destroy everything! Like, think about all those monsters that attacked your tribe. If there really was some sort of cunning plan, wouldn't it make more sense to send them to attack Kachina and her small team? Um, not that Paimon wants them to be in any more danger, it's just... <laughs> Relax, I get it. The Abyss is difficult to understand, that's for sure. At a glance, it certainly seems like the only goal is total destruction. The Abyss isn't a living entity, after all, so what capacity for logic or planning could it possibly possess? But through our long history of fighting the Abyss, we've realized things aren't quite so simple. 500 years ago, the Abyss invaded Tevat. You know about that, right? That's right. Conria suffered greatly during that time. But so did every other nation in Tevat. And Natlan was the worst affected of all. It took the combined efforts of the then Pyro Archon and heroes from every tribe to finally repel the Abyss. Even so, the effects of the invasion lingered for hundreds of years, only able to be reversed little by little. Our tribe's waters were contaminated. The children of Echo's territory was overrun by dangerous sludge surging from underground. Unrelenting black winds tore across the lands of the Flower Feather Clan. It was like each disaster was designed for a specific tribe. Exactly. We once thought that the Abyss's desire for destruction was a sort of primal instinct. But its methods are, in truth, marked by intelligence. We now believe the Abyss has invaded the Night Kingdom and has the capacity to read the memories of this land at any given moment. And that's how it became so dangerous and cunning. Almost like it knows you inside and out. Yes, and that's why we've been unable to fully eradicate it, even after all this time. Luckily, the problems left behind by the Abyss have been successfully addressed by the various Pyro Archons we've had over the years. Now every tribe is prospering and things are looking up. I mean, just look at what we managed to do a few days ago. We totally fought them off. You must have had to sacrifice a lot to get to this point. Every battle, every sacrifice is in pursuit of a future where we get to stop fighting. Responsibility, duty, unavoidable burden. Everyone in Natlan views the war differently. But I believe we will be rid of the Abyss one day. And the efforts of all who fought against them will become a story for the ages. 
To think that my name could survive in ballads passed down to future generations, it's kind of romantic. Everyone has something that drives them forward, you know? <laughs> Be my guest. Heroes are always welcome in Natlan. Anyway, let's head to the stadium. Our fishing trip can wait until Kachina's back with us. The sea's not going anywhere. Of course. No one's gonna miss out on the chance to welcome our heroes back from battle. <laughs> it's their moment of glory. Kachina's gonna be so flustered. She's never had this many eyes on her before. Yeah, she doesn't seem like the kind of person who likes being the center of attention. Looks like I'm just in time. Yeah, a commission ran longer than expected, but I made it. I heard about the incident with your tribe, Mualani. Is everyone all right? Yeah, it's all taken care of. Our new friend here has got some tricks up her sleeve, by the way. She's just as strong as Kachina made her out to be. Hey, look! Is it about to start? That's right. Someone will come out and recite a eulogy, and then we'll sing the Ode of Resurrection together. Come on, let's find a spot with a good view. When the singing starts, just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Let's go somewhere higher up so Kachina can spot us. Warriors of Netland, heed the call of life. We are the inheritors of memory and legend. Those who grew alongside sun and wind. Those who forged our own destiny and future. That is Netland's fire. The lifeblood of our nation. <laughs> I could not find Kachina within the Night Kingdom, or locate her ancient name. What? Uh, what does that even mean? Usually once the ode is complete, 
the Pyro Archon and Resurrected Person will emerge from the flames. But something went wrong. What's going on? This has never happened before. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Clearly, the team sent to fight the Abyss didn't win after all. Think about it. The Ode rekindles all victors. We witnessed it countless times. Since the Archon couldn't find Kachina in the Night Kingdom, that must mean there's more to this victory than meets the eye. Hey! You just haven't gotten over the fact that Kachina beat you in the pilgrimage! Pathetic. The both of you. Your wild guesses are misplaced. We completed our mission. Maybe you did. But who's to say whether that little girl even contributed at all? Maybe she got scared and ran off. Why would the Wyab recognize someone like her, even if she was on the winning team? How dare you insult a hero of Natland like that! Kachina sacrificed herself to repel the Abyss! She doesn't deserve to be subjected to your vile rumors when she's not even here to defend herself! Calm down, Mulani. There's no point arguing with the likes of them. I can't just sit here and let them slander her like that! To insult a hero of Natlan, the person actually has to be a hero. You... you... Think about it, everyone. Who do you think is really at fault here? A girl who never should have even gone to war? Or the great Pyro Archon? Why would the rules of our nation suddenly stop working? <sighs> That's true. If she wasn't revived, it must mean she failed to achieve victory. Maybe the Wyab interpret victory in different ways? I mean, that girl didn't look all that strong to me. Kachina wouldn't have run! That's not like her at all! No, she's been waiting for this moment for too long. No matter how daunting the situation, no matter how scared she might feel, she's always the first person to stand up and face it head on. We don't even know what happened. So don't you dare try to use this as an excuse to vent your anger or slander her reputation. Fine. We'll find out what happens soon enough. Then, we'll see who truly deserves glory. That's enough. There is no doubt about today's victory, or Kachina's part in it. She is a hero worthy of our admiration and celebration. However, the failure of today's ceremony is undeniable. Kachina has not been rekindled, and I offer you all my deepest apologies as I continue to investigate this matter. To prevent further casualties, I have decided to suspend the pilgrimage until this matter is resolved. What? No one is all-knowing. No one is infallible, not even myself. But doubt is a means by which we seek the truth, not a weapon we wield against others. I... 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 I, I didn't mean it that way, Archon. I just... If there are things you wish to clarify, then ask me directly. Doubt my answer if you wish. But now's your chance. You have concerns? State them. No, of, of course not. Even though I have said nothing to change your mind, then it would seem the truth never mattered to you at all. That guy doesn't even have the courage to answer the Pyro Archon's question. So much for all that glory talk earlier. I have a question, Archon. My friend Kachina. Do you have any idea where she is? It's extremely important to me. I know you said you were investigating the situation, but I'm sorry, that's not enough. I've already shared everything I know. If you want to learn the truth and rescue your friend sooner, you should join the investigation. So, what do you say? Of course I'll join. In that case, come see me in the speaker's chamber. We should join them. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, could you drop by as well, Traveler? I'd like to have a chat. Rest assured, everyone, I'll keep the tribal chiefs informed on the progress of the investigation. Once again, I apologize for the outcome of this ceremony. If there are no further questions, let's part for now. 
Um, did she just ask us to come along? I believe she did. Let's go. I'd like to know what's going on myself. The situation is urgent, so I'll get straight to the point. Kachina is undoubtedly a hero of Natlan, and I'm deeply sorry this happened to her. There's been unrest in the Night Kingdom, but I don't know what's causing it. As a result, I've been unable to track down her location. Until we find and address the cause of the unrest, the Ode of Resurrection will continue to be ineffective. And that means Kachina won't be able to come back? That's correct. Not until the problem with the Night Kingdom is resolved. How long will that take? It's hard to say. Kachina always dreamed of fighting the Abyss. Of doing her part to defend Natlan. She wasn't afraid of death because she knew if it came down to it, the Pyro Archon would be there to bring her back to life. Whenever we sat down together, exhausted from training, she would always hum the Ode of Resurrection. She was supposed to come back to us. We were supposed to hug her and celebrate with her and share her joy. We supported her every step of the way, but what are we supposed to do now? Sit peacefully and wait for her return? Lose ourselves in grief over her death? Tell me. Are we her friends, or her murderers? That's not fair, Mulani. It's all right. I understand your rage and your grief. Kachina's life means a great deal to me, Mulani. Believe me, I want to bring her back as soon as possible. I would give you that peace of mind if I could. But please... Hear what I have to say, so I can at least give you a broader picture of the issue we are now facing. Considering the recent attack on your tribe, I believe the Abyss has found a new means of undermining the rules of our nation. You mean... The Sacred Flame. The foundation of our resistance against the Abyss. If we continue to hold the pilgrimage and send teams to fight the Abyss, there will likely be more casualties. But if we stop altogether, the Sacred Flame will only grow weaker. The Abyss will scale up their attacks, and the tragedy we saw with the people of the Springs will only be the first of many. If we compare the two choices, the former seems to be the lesser of two evils. <sighs> Sorry, I know that may sound harsh, but I bear the name Malipo. Weighing the costs is my duty. The raw truth can be cruel. But we need to understand it if we want to approach this rationally. But what would you say, Mulani? This is personal for you. And unlike Kanich, I dare say it's not a simple case of weighing up which course of action is less painful, is it? No. I can't choose between them, and I don't want to. Saying that one is preferable over the other is disrespectful to the people who suffered. Hmm. You're saying it doesn't matter whether I suspend the pilgrimage. The consequences will be equally painful. Yes. What happened to Kachina breaks my heart. But I couldn't bring myself to sacrifice other people for her sake. And that is the crux of the problem. It's not simply a matter of choosing the lesser of two evils. Either way, there will be people who suffer. And the end result will be the same. Belief in the pilgrimage will waver. Once doubt has crept in, the people will no longer unite in battle against the Abyss. And that is exactly what the Abyss wants. Their ultimate goal isn't to break the rules that make the Ode of Resurrection work. It's to destroy the people's faith in them. To prevent what happened to Kachina from happening to anyone else, we need to suspend the pilgrimage. So that is my current plan. And in the meantime, I've made efforts to strengthen each tribe's defenses. Then, we
we have to find another way of strengthening the sacred flame to keep the abyss at bay. This won't be easy. I'll need time to figure out the best approach. I understand your anger, Mualani, but I hope that provided some clarity, at least. Wow. Paimon thought things were gonna get heated for a second, but the Pyro Archon took the time to explain everything so patiently. I owe you an apology, Archon. I let myself get carried away earlier, and I'm sorry. You're right. We need to focus on finding solutions. We could always hold the pilgrimage without sending a team to fight in the Night Warden Wars. That way, we would still be able to fuel the Sacred Flame. I've considered that, but the two events have nearly always been linked. Without the chance to fight the Abyss, pilgrimage rankings lose their prestige, and competitor numbers will drop. With fewer participants, the amount of contending fire produced will decrease, and the vicious cycle will continue indefinitely. So, essentially, the Abyss is taking Kachina hostage. You've learned about the concept of ley lines during your travels, yes? The Night Kingdom is something similar. Staying there for a short period of time shouldn't have an effect on the person. But with the Abyss in the picture, it's a different story. Your sense of self will be devoured until eventually you become one with the Sea of Souls. Imagine pouring a cup of water into a rushing river. You can try to scoop up another cup, but there's no chance it will be the same water you had before. I won't sugarcoat it. That is the danger Kachina is currently facing. Just like you said, Archon. Both of these problems need to be addressed. You can focus all your efforts on dealing with the Sacred Flame. I will go search for Kachina. The Abyss poses the same threat to you as it does to her. It is very possible you will not return. Knowing that, do you still choose to go? Kachina's waiting for us to rescue her. That's all that matters. I failed to protect her during our campaign. But I can make it up to her now. I choose to go as well. Um, Traveler? What do you think? Understood. Then I'll support you in any way I can. The Masters of the Nightwind have a technique that can extract an ancient name from the ley lines. If we can find Kachina's ancient name, I can use the link between them to pinpoint her position within the Night Kingdom. Then comes the hard part. You need to visit the Night Kingdom in person and rescue her. Can we even go there? Under normal circumstances, only the consciousness can enter. But there is a way to go there in person. However, know that the Night Kingdom will attempt to repel you, and the Abyss certainly won't leave you be. That's fine by me. Same here. Fighting the Abyss is nothing new for me. Sitlali of the Masters of the Nightwind once created an artifact that can be used to communicate with the Wild. We call it the Spirit Speaker Stone. It was originally used as a ceremonial artifact wielded by the tribal chiefs, but that spiritual quality also means it can be used to search for an ancient name. That was the artifact I delivered to the Scions of the Canopy a few days ago. Didn't think I'd be hearing about it again so soon. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. Your thanks are unnecessary. I will offer you whatever aid I can, but your fellowship and courage are what will truly decide the success of this operation. <laughs> Besides, you're the ones helping me. I can only focus on one thing at a time, after all. <sighs> Traveler, I... Certainly didn't expect our first conversation to be so serious. I've heard all about your accomplishments. Ever since you arrived, I've been hoping to meet you and offer you Natlin's highest level of hospitality. Um, why? Why? Is that not what happened in the other nations you visited? Yeah, things 
were pretty complicated at the start. And, you know, in the middle. But our reputation's solid nowadays! <laughs> That's more like it. After all, I've heard you're someone who transcends fate. Perhaps even more than you can imagine. But we can talk about that some other time. Ideally, this would be the perfect night for a drink and some musical ambiance. But there are important things to be done. Oh, I almost forgot. Atea was wounded in the fight against the Abyss. She wanted us to give this to you. It embodies fond memories and my strength of will. That's what she asked us to tell you. She said you'd know what that means. <sighs> I didn't think this day would come so soon. The flames of her life force. I can feel them flowing within the talisman. <laughs> if things were different, the two of us could have enjoyed the hot springs together while she gave this to me in person. We're supposed to be hot spring buddies after all. But don't worry. This talisman means a great deal to me. I'll take good care of it, and once this is all over, I'll pay Atea a visit. You said you didn't want to jeopardize the production of Contending Fire. But that's not at all why you decided to suspend the pilgrimage, is it? You're right. Even now, the production of Contending Fire is far from sufficient. The gradual corrosion caused by the Abyss has resulted in a massive shortage of pyro energy, and we're currently at the breaking point. As things stand, the pilgrimage is a lost cause. Suspending it allows us to save our strength to defend the tribes. The Abyss has brought catastrophe to Natlan, and Kachina's disappearance in the Night Kingdom is a direct consequence of that. We can't let the general public know that. No. If the public learned that Natlan's destruction was close at hand, there would be immense panic. But if I said nothing at all, they would have continued to question the integrity of Natlan's heroes. Another simple choice. The latter was clearly the better solution. But you chose otherwise. I have never subscribed to the belief that the right choice is the one with the fewest sacrifices. Let's go. There's still a way for the Sacred Flame to last a little longer. You mean... Yes. Come with me. The Sacred Flame must never go out. Not only does it strike fear in the Abyss, but it's also the pillar of Natland's stability. So until our heroes are ready, I will sacrifice my power to keep it burning. But that can only last so long. I think we should focus on the remaining ancient name bearers. Don't let desperation cloud your judgment. Those chosen by the Wyab have already embarked on their destined path. It is for them to decide how that journey ends, not us. All we can do is support them. Even so, for you to make this sacrifice, it's not right. <laughs> if not me, then who? No other is capable of sustaining the sacred flame. I possess great strength, but I'm not above my people. This is part of my duty. Archon! It's the Fatui! The Archon of Natlan. A force to be reckoned with. The secret of the Ley Lines is no secret to me. Long have they been destined for ruin. <laughs> And since the oath made five centuries ago remains unfulfilled, what use is the Gnosis in your hands? 
I don't know what you mean. But it sounds like this is about more than the Tsaritsa. In times of crisis, someone must pick up the mantle of salvation. Your plan has reached an impasse, and now it falls to me to create new rules for Natlan. But before the dawn of a new age, the old must be destroyed. I assume that's the end of your speech? Good. People like us? Let our blades do the talking! <laughs> <laughs> Masters of the Night Wind. Send word. The captain and his followers must be apprehended. Aren't you all right, Archon? He was a formidable opponent. Exactly what I would expect from the first of the Fatui Harbingers. I never imagined someone could match you in combat. If the Saritza sent him here, why would he bring up what happened five centuries ago? Yeah. And how much does he know about Natlan? The Harbingers are all driven by their own personal goals. The only purpose that unites them is collecting the Gnosis. But I'm sure the Captain has his own reasons for being here as well. Whatever his motive, we should shift our focus to the Fatui. If they attack again, and we're not prepared, we're done for. No, we're running out of time. The wound I inflicted should hold him back and weaken him for the time being. Besides, I'm sure you noticed. The power that came to his rescue just now came from the Masters of the Nightwind. In other words, there are traitors among us. Not necessarily. This could prove to be a very valuable turn of events. When we exchanged final blows, I sensed an unusual presence within him. I'll need to investigate further. Kanich, go to the Masters of the Nightwind and look into who could have aided the Captain. Speak to Seat Lali. She should know. Of course. I'll head out right now. Do you still intend to... Yes. But fear not.
Natland's strength has never rested solely in its Archon. Together we foresaw the only path that leads to our nation's future. We must trust in that vision now. Is everything okay, Archon? Ah, uh, completely fine. Just lamenting the fact that I never got a picture when I could still turn my hair into flames. <laughs> ah, too late now. I just hope the others have a safe journey. like the Archon unleashed her power. She must be fighting a formidable opponent. Should we go back and check what's going on? Have faith in the Archon. She wouldn't lose in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Once we find Kachina's ancient name, we'll head right back. Okay, let's just keep climbing. Emon really hopes nothing goes wrong. The tribe's people are very adventurous. Oh, kinda like us then! <laughs> I'm not so sure. You don't strike me as the type to enjoy danger. The scions of the canopy are a bunch of thrill seekers. They love extreme sports like rock climbing, rappelling, volcano parkour, or even bungee jumping without a rope while a Yunkasaur stands at the edge and uses its tongue to catch them. Sound like something you'd be interested in? Okay, that does sound different from our usual adventures. Hi, my. That's Waina, the tribal chief. Let's head over to him. Jaska? Nice to see you again, Wyna. I'm afraid we don't have time for pleasantries, so I'll get right to it. We're here for the Spirit Speaker Stone. Whoa, hold on a second. At least tell me why you need it first. My friend Kachina is trapped within the Night Kingdom. We need the stone to find her ancient name and rescue her. Rescue her? From the Night Kingdom? That's right. I'm sorry, but someone needs to tell you what you don't want to hear. Going there, a mature warrior would never make such a foolish decision. The nature of battle is unpredictable. You never know how it's going to end. Losing a friend is tragic, but when that happens, the best thing you can do is focus on how to prevent further casualties. I appreciate what you're trying to say, Chief Wyna. But if the price of maturity is abandoning a friend in need, I'll choose foolishness any day. If Kachina's still holding on, then so will I. I thought you might say that. <sighs> is something wrong, Wyna? This doesn't seem like you. Life isn't complete without taking risks. That's always been your mantra. <laughs> it's nothing. The Night Kingdom is a dangerous place. Can't blame me for checking if you were up to the task. If you're that determined, far be it from me to stop you. Here's the stone. Keep it safe, okay? 
It's not like we have a spare. Thank you. Huh. Seems like you two go way back. But aren't you from the Flower Feather Clan, Chaska? Oh, Chaska's a peacekeeper. So she's famous throughout the tribes. She's always the one people call to resolve conflicts. So we slowly got to know each other that way. Her younger sister, Queechee's always hanging around our tribe, too. She's helped us out a lot in the past. Oh, you have a younger sister? Yes. I'll introduce you to her sometime. But let's get back to business. Wayna, how do we use the stone? As you probably know, your intended destination is completely different from the real world. The Night Kingdom is like a river flowing with concepts. And the ancient name you seek is like a tiny fish swimming downstream. In that sense, the stone is like a fishing boat drifting down the river. But the boat alone isn't enough. You need a fisherman experienced enough to steer it in the right direction. We couldn't do that ourselves? With a little practice, I'm sure you could. You have the strength and the talent. If you want to make sure this works, though, I could recommend someone to you. Who? Bichama, a legendary warrior and scout from our tribe. He's got a keen eye and a well-honed intuition. Even his ancient name means to seek. If you're fishing for a name, you're gonna want him on the boat. Bichama? Why does that name sound familiar? He's one of Auntie Atea's hot spring buddies. I've heard stories about him. Where can we find him? Ever since Malco passed, he spends most of his time gazing out at the scenery from the clifftops. Follow the path that way, and I'm sure you'll find him. Thank you. We'll go look for him there. <sighs> Good luck. I hope everything goes well. The scenery from the cliff tops. Ah, that must be him. Hello there, are you Vichana? That's me. Did you need something? What? You're saying you can bring someone back from the Night Kingdom? How is that even possible? No. If you really think about it, anything's possible in that kind of place. But that would mean... Are you okay? You don't look so good. Mm hmm. Everything's fine. I'll help you, but I do have a small request. After I help you find Kachina's ancient name, I want to use the stone to look for my friends as well. Your friend? Oh, why not mention someone named Malco? Is that who you're talking about? Yes, but I'd rather not get into it if it's all the same to you. That's not a problem. We agree to your request. Yeah. Since you're helping us find Kachina's ancient name, it's only right that we return the favor. Then we're agreed. Can I have a look at the stone? can tell it functions almost like an abyssal pylon 
Both connect the Night Kingdom to the living world. Once the connection is established, the Abyss will come surging through the opening like a predator honing in on the scent of blood. So we have to be sure not to use it in a tribal settlement. Wow, you got all that just from looking at it? I just picked up on the basics, really. I still have no idea why it works. You said someone named Sit Lali invented this. They must be a genius. I'll go find an open area and start setting things up. In the meantime, I need you to get two things for me. We'll go right away. What do you need? First, I'll need some hook ropes. Pretty much every store around here carries them, so no need to go anywhere special. Oh, and I need to build a net out of them, so make sure you get a good amount. Wait, are you saying you're going to use a real net to catch Kachina's ancient name? How does that work when one's tangible and one's not? By creating something tangible in our world, like a net, we can create a connection to a corresponding concept in the Night Kingdom. Basically, I'm going to use the concept of a net to catch something equally intangible. An ancient name. Oh, I see. What about the second thing you needed? Right. I need one... No, two chunks of obsidian. Once we bring the ancient names into our world, we'll need a place to store them. Normally, you can only get obsidian from the Children of Echoes, but I heard there's a traveling merchant from that tribe around here somewhere, so maybe you can try your luck there. Gotcha! All right, let's split up. See that clearing? Let's meet over there when you're done. Oh, and you can send someone with me if you want. In case you're worried, I might take the stone for myself. Mm, what do you think, Chaska? <laughs> There's no need. Lena spoke highly of you. That means you're trustworthy. <sighs> I appreciate it. Even though that doesn't mean much to me anymore. Anyway, it'll take some time to set everything up, so no need to rush. I'll see you in a bit. Odd guy. He seems so defeated, but also really invested in the stone at the same time. I don't have any more insight than you, Paimon. Let's just focus on the preparations for now. Hang on, Kachina. We're coming for you. I got a new letter from an informant. Looks like the situation has changed again. Hmm. Easy money. Take it easy. Do you have any hook ropes for sale? Hook ropes? As in rock climbing equipment? Yes. How much for your whole stock? Oh, the whole thing? Oh, let me see. That would be 30,000 mora in total. Deal? Deal. Wait, really? What, you want me to drive down the price? We just need these as fast as possible, thanks. Oh, uh, no problem at all. I'll even pass along some information on the house. These ropes are usually used by rock climbing enthusiasts. Uh, if you want to learn, Roke is the person you want to ask. All right, that's everything. Here you go. Now we need the obsidian. Let's go talk to the traveling merchant Bichama mentioned.
Excuse me, do you sell obsidian? Why, yes. <laughs> I've got a chunk for sale right over there. Perfect. Is that the only one, though? We actually need two. Hmm. That might be tough. Uh, tell you what. I'll take a look through these boxes over here, and, and we'll see what we can find. Thank you so much. We'll wait here. <sighs> Relax. Everything's going according to plan. I know, it's just... I could tell Vichama feels the same way about his friend that I do about Kachina. I hope this chunk of obsidian isn't the only one. Kachina always carries all sorts of shiny stones with her. If I was the one trapped in the Night Kingdom, she'd have a whole pile of obsidian ready in a heartbeat. Well, would you look at that? I did bring an extra. <laughs> Here you go, young lady. How does it look? Perfect! Thank you. How much do I owe you? If you hadn't shown up, these stones would have just sat here collecting dust. I'll take 3,000 more of for both. Here you go. By the way, I heard you mention Vichama just now. You run in an errand for him, then? How's he doing? Melko's been gone for five years now. It's about time he started to move forward. Do you know what happened between them? I heard about it in passing while I was out drinking one night. But I don't know all the details. Michama and Melko grew up together, and even made a name for themselves together. Melko was an amazing fighter, capable of knocking out multiple opponents in a single hit, while Vichama excelled at scouting and analyzing the battlefield. The two made an excellent team, and managed to beat back the Abyss several times. Five years ago, they both emerged triumphant in the pilgrimage and were placed on the same team to fight the Abyss. But on the eve of battle, the Abyss launched an attack on their tribe, and Bichama suffered an injury to his leg while attempting to rescue someone. Then what happened? The team agreed that he couldn't fight the Abyss in his condition. Bichama didn't argue. He knew going to the front lines with an injured leg would make him a burden in battle. So they raised the issue with the Pyro Archon, and she agreed to let him stay behind. It's just... Melko and the others ended up facing hordes of abyssal monsters in numbers that far exceeded anyone's expectations. The team made an error in judgment, and they fell to the onslaught. Vichama went into a deep depression after that. He blames himself for everything. Oh, you're not wrong. But it's possible he chooses to blame himself. Not because he did something wrong, but because he wasn't able to do anything at all. I've tried convincing him to move forward. To stop uh, dwelling on the past. But the shadow of Melko's death hangs over him still. The Abyss has caused so much suffering, and some wounds never heal. I wish there was something he could do to make himself feel better, but... Uh, anyway, that's the gist of it. Maybe you could help him talk things through sometime. I would really appreciate it. Did you get everything? Yep, it's all here. When do we start? I've made all the necessary adjustments, so we're good to go. As agreed, I'll help you find Kachina's ancient name, and then you return the favor. Go ahead. Uh, yes. After Malko fell, I scoured the battlefield to see what happened. It turned out 
he wasn't bested by some impossibly powerful foe. He was dragged to his grave by the sheer number of enemies. If I had been there, I would have been able to sense the danger. I could have warned them not to advance. I've always blamed myself for what happened. But when you told me about Kachina, I realized there's a chance Malco might also be alive, fighting for survival in the Night Kingdom. But that happened several years ago, right? The Pyro Archon said all life within the Night Kingdom eventually becomes one with the Sea of Souls. There might not be much hope, but I still have to try. Malco and I promised each other, even if we never managed to root out the Abyss for good, we would fight together until the end. All right, let's get to it. I'll start searching for the conceptualized version of Kachina's ancient name. If you see any fragments scattered around the area, please collect them. Make sure you prepare yourselves for battle. As I said, the stone will link the mortal realm to the Night Kingdom. The Abyss will likely emerge in response. Look at that golden thing! It must be one of those fragments Vichama mentioned. Let's get closer! Take it easy. Shattered. I see everything. Make yourselves at home. Gangs up from Zova. Hey. How much longer, Bichama? Not long. We're getting close. Take it! I found Kachina's ancient name. Hang in there, Malko. Just a little longer. Something's not right. The power of the Abyss is getting stronger. The Abyss is corroding his body! Vichama, you can't keep going. You'll die. I should have died five years ago. I just need a little more time. Please, I'm almost there. Thank you. This power. 
Hanging in there? Malco. No, why can't I find him? Why? We can't wait any longer. Pull him away from the stone, Muolani. I already tried, but the power of the abyss has him in a chokehold. It's like he's tied to the stone with an invisible rope. In that case, we have no choice. I'm sorry, Seed Lolly. Get back! Chaska, wait! Ouch! What happened just now? It looked like the spirit speaker stone was... The stone's power was spiraling out of control. The only way to stop it was to destroy it. You were all caught in the shockwave of the explosion. You might feel dizzy for a while, but that's normal. Give us a heads up next time, will you? You're lucky we managed to dodge it in time. I thought I said to get back. Yeah, barely a second before you made it go poof. Not everyone has your reflexes, Chaska. We were this close to getting dragged into the explosion. Okay, I'll be more careful next time. At least Kachina's ancient name is still in one piece. Wait, where's Vichama? Vichama! Uh, uh. Vichama! I couldn't find Malko's ancient name. It must be completely gone by now. Once your ancient name disappears, there's no coming back. From the very beginning, I knew there was a slim chance, but still. And now... <sighs> It's too late to save him. From the minute he left that day, it was already too late. Vichama. I'm sure he's heard enough condolences over the years. Let's just give him some space. Huh? What's that in your hands, Vichama? It looks like something's glowing! Huh? This is... Hey, Malco. Got any strength left? Not enough to swing a sword, but to say a few last words. Sure. <laughs> Too bad no one will get to hear them. I never thought I'd actually die on this mission. <laughs> Not that I'm afraid to die. It's just hard thinking about my mom's face when she hears the news guess I have something to be thankful for then my parents died a long time ago they won't have to mourn me <sighs> Pisak <sighs> Always had to beat me at everything, didn't you? Right to the end, you were never one for goodbyes. Maybe you're right. Maybe no one will get to hear our last words. But just in case... Vichama... I'm so glad you didn't come with us. Don't be sad. Just... Keep on living. For the both of us. <sighs> Was that... a memory? Seems like we were able to salvage something after all. Of course. Seeing him, hearing his voice again, it makes me... unbelievably happy. But... It also brings with it an even deeper pain. A deeper pain? Why? <laughs> Malco was always the type to put on a brave face. But in that memory just now, his hands were shaking. And his smile was forced. For all these years, I regretted not being able to fight alongside him to the end. And now I know at the end of his life, he was thinking the same thing. 
be Chama. I'm fine. Actually, I heard Chief Wina wasn't really on board with your plan to go to the Night Kingdom. When you asked for my help, I hesitated too. I knew helping you find your friend's ancient name meant leading you one step closer to danger. But I also understood why you had to try. Everyone has regrets in life, but not everyone gets the chance to make up for them. Once allowed to fester, guilt strips us of our most valuable qualities as warriors. In that sense, we might as well choose the braver path from the very beginning. If I could do it all over again, I would have followed Malco to the front lines no matter what. Even with an injured leg, there were still things I could have done. That way, even if the outcome stayed the same, I still would have fought alongside him to the end. There are critical junctures in life, and if you don't seize the chance to act, there's no going back. That's something I had to learn in hindsight. But you're still at the crossroads of your journey, so... I hope you can walk away without regrets. Thank you, Vichama. I feel even more determined now. Kachina will come back to us. I'll make sure of it. I promised I would find her, and I intend to keep that promise. That's good to hear. <coughs> Strange. <clears throat> My body, it's... Once abyssal corrosion enters the body, a portion will fuse itself to your internal organs. Even though the Traveler possesses powers of purification, the corrosion can never be fully eradicated. Thanks to her, though, you are only briefly exposed. Slowing your breathing and controlling your emotions should help you keep the symptoms in check. Well, that does make me feel better. You seem very knowledgeable about all this. Just speaking from experience, that's all. Anyway, we've recovered Kachina's ancient name, so we're off to a great start. Let's get Vichama back to his tribe and tell Wine of the good news. Oh, um, and apologize for destroying the Spirit Speaker Stone. We had no choice, though, so he'll probably understand. Mm, right? <laughs> <sighs> Koichi, are you really gonna just stand there like that? I don't know what you want from me. I think you know exactly what I'm trying to say, Uncle Wina. I can hear it in your voice. Honestly, it's just one thing after another with you two. Huh, <sighs> they're back. Koichi? What are you doing here? Don't play dumb with your own sister. You know exactly why I'm here. My apologies, everyone. I just need to borrow Tosca for a few minutes. You come with me. <sighs> I'll be just a moment. Who is that? Kuichi, Tosca's younger sister. Although the two aren't actually related by blood, it's kind of a long story. It's not really my story to tell, but I guess it's not a secret. You see, Chaska was actually raised by cuckoo sores. She was afflicted with a rare disease when she was a child, and abandoned in the wild as a result. The Abyss found her out there, all on her own, and tried to devour her. But in the end, all that did was trigger her will to live. That strength of will pushed her to survive. But it also planted a seed of conflict within her. Eventually, she was adopted by the cuckoo source. Wherever they went, she followed, getting into fights right and left. For some reason, Paimon can totally imagine that. <laughs> well, when Chaska finally returned to human society, it was Quichi's parents who adopted her. At the time, Chaska still had a habit of getting into fights, so Kuichi was always taking her around, apologizing to everyone. Ah, I remember those days. One of those fights was definitely with me. But, you know, kids, you're fighting one minute and your friend's the next. 
Eventually, she found a way to rein in that desire to fight. And now she's who people call to resolve conflicts. She's known as the Peacemaker. It sounds like she still argues with Koichi, though. Don't siblings usually stop fighting when they get older? <sighs> That's partly my fault. Koichi asked me to stop Chaska from doing anything dangerous, but you probably know by now, once Chaska makes up her mind, there's no changing it. Oh, I get it. No wonder you tried to talk us out of going to the Night Kingdom. Chaska even said that wasn't like you. I'm all for your adventure. You need to take risks when you're young, because by the time you're my age, you couldn't attempt something like that even if you wanted to. Better try now than live with regrets later. That's what I say. Still, I can understand where Kuichi's coming from. In the end, nobody wants to sit back and let a loved one put their life on the line. All right, it's just the two of us now. You have one minute to explain yourself. I don't have anything to say. You don't have to approve, but you should know I only do what's necessary. That attitude is exactly the problem. It's like you don't care. You try to sneak off to the Night Kingdom behind my back and then play it down as if it's just a trip abroad. Well, technically I am going abroad, right? Again with the excuses! <sighs> we agreed, didn't we? There are four levels of danger. If it's not something urgent, you can only engage in level two danger and below. You can only go up to level 3 if a situation is so dire, there's absolutely no alternative. But a trip to the Night Kingdom? If that's not a level 4, I don't know what is! And you were just going to sneak into the place without saying anything! What do you mean, sneak into the place? I always planned on walking in there with my head held high. You bought off Uncle Wyna, didn't you? He promised me he'd stop you from doing anything dangerous. Oh, it's like he didn't even try. You feel like he went back on his word. What if I told you my mind was made up, and there was nothing he could have done? Not even by force. Oh, I knew it! So he did try to say something, but you didn't listen. This is important. If you were in my shoes, you'd make the same decision. You don't know that? I'm a doctor, and I handle logistics. If you're going to waltz into a dangerous situation where you could lose control at any moment, it's my duty to say something. All right, whatever. Anything else? <sighs> you... <sighs> what do you mean, anything else? Why don't you reflect on what you've done and promise me you'll stay put? Time out. Is this one of our normal arguments or a serious one? Chaska, does it sound like I'm joking? Then... You need to know something. What happened to Kachina was partially my fault. I can't leave her there to die. That's not who I am. But the person you become when you lose control, that's also not who you are. That's a different issue. You said it yourself. A person is only as good as their morals. If I want to live in Natlan, I need to display qualities that make me worthy of this nation. I've also told you that managing your condition is equally important. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. <sighs> All right, let's stop this here. If we keep going, I might actually have to get serious. And I think Wyna prefers his roof attached to his house. Is that a threat? That sounds like a threat to me. Ugh! Koichi! <sighs> Younger sisters are supposed to listen to their elders. Uh, so, you're really going to go, no matter what I say? I'm supposed to be your sister. Then support me. I'll be back. All you have to do is wait. Uh, Chaska. So, that's it. Why'd you have to turn out to be so Darn... annoying. Uh, you two are something else. Something you wanted to say? I know you aren't related by blood, but you two sure are similar. Really? You know, 
I said that very thing to Kuichi not too long ago, and she reacted the exact same way, down to the very tone of voice. It's not my place to get involved, but I will say this. Try to spend a little more time with your sister. You're tough kids. That doesn't mean you have to go it alone. Thank you. Anytime. All right. If you're done with the spirit speaker stone, you might as well hand it over. According to Kinich, it's an important ceremonial artifact, so it'd be safer to keep it with me. Um, about that. <sighs> if only Tone Gift Bard was here, he could have repaired it just like the Holy Liar. It might be in a few more pieces than you remember. Uh huh? I see. Mm. Sounds like it was an urgent situation. If someone's life was on the line, then you had no choice. Still, Seat Lali's going to be a nightmare to deal with now that you've broken her stuff. I'll explain everything to her later. Stay safe out there in the Night Kingdom, okay? I'll wait here for your safe return. Kachina's ancient name, too! Well, it's fairly complicated. Let me give you the condensed version. The Fatui again? We can't go anywhere without them causing trouble. But what if the Fatui finds out you've lost your power? Won't they try to take advantage of the situation? <laughs> That's why it has to be our little secret. No one else can know, or we're asking for trouble. Look, I wish I could offer you some sort of consolation, but... I won't lie to you. With multiple factions closing in, there's nothing comforting about the situation we're facing. Still... All you need to do is focus on your goal. You can leave the complicated matters to me. I can also step in on the Pyro Archon's behalf. There's a limit to what I can accomplish, but I'll help you however I can. <laughs> There's no need to be so modest, Yansan. Your incredible strength has long been a well-known fact. You're the pride of your tribe. Archon, I... I'm sorry about before. You have so much on your plate. So much that you have to worry about. But all I could do was focus on my own feelings. You have nothing to be sorry about. We all get overwhelmed by our emotions, myself included. Your reaction to Kachina's disappearance, I... I understand that feeling very well. Well, now that we have Kachina's ancient name, let's go track her down. Follow me. What is this place? Hey, isn't that Atea's talisman? <laughs> Good eye. This is where I store all the various mementos I've collected. Wow. I've never seen this place before. There's so many things in here. It looks like there are items from every tribe. Collecting them must have taken a lot of effort. I suppose you could think of it as a hobby of sorts. In Natlan, everyone grows up listening to the stories of heroes, and physical items do a far better job of preserving those stories than our own memory. <sighs> now, I still have some preparations to make for the ceremony, so feel free to take a look around in the meantime. If you're curious about an item, I'm more than willing to tell you about its origins. There 
are so many jars and potions around here. Do they have anything to do with alchemy? No, those belong to the masters of the Nightwind. Their ceremonial tools used to amplify the ability to communicate with the Night Kingdom and the Wyab. Yamaya is an expert in this field, and she taught me a lot. Even though she appears stoic and serious, she actually has a keen sense of humor. The tools you see here are quite traditional. Her students found them outdated, so she passed them on to me. The contents of the jars aren't all that special. Oh, uh, except the big jar in the middle. That's what she really wanted to give me. Ooh, must be something really cool. What's inside? Grape juice. Huh? <laughs> it's quite tasty, although probably expired by now. Make sure to handle everything with care. This cup, for example, it's heavier than it looks. This flower looks like it's thriving. You must be good at taking care of plants, Archon. This fishing basket looks familiar. There's a fishing rod here. It must have belonged to the people of the springs. That's right. It belongs to a legendary fisherman named Matavaru. I have his entire set of fishing equipment, actually. He and I met in a tavern. He told me about a particular kind of giant fish and his meticulous plan to catch it. In his eyes, I saw a hunger and a strong fighting spirit. To him, the sea was the battlefield upon which he staked his honor. So, did he do it? The next time I saw him, he was covered in scars. It turned out the fish he sought had been corroded by the abyss. He managed to kill the fish, but sustained a serious injury in the process, which meant he could never go deep sea fishing again. Can a fisherman claim victory? If he fails to bring back his catch, that's what he asked me in the end. Well, Paimon thinks he won. That was my answer as well. The experience was far more valuable than the prize itself. In the end, he didn't want his tools to go to waste, so he gave them to me. Wait, that means you also know how to fish. <laughs> Maybe we can go head to head sometime. This is a Taya's talisman. I'm sure you're familiar with this one already. Atea was rarely ever without it. The talisman brought her a lot of luck in battle. Whoa, this weapon is huge! Which tribe did it belong to? Ah, that weapon belonged to Tainoch, a hero from 500 years ago. Strictly speaking, he didn't belong to any single tribe. That's because even before the disaster with the Abyss broke out, he had already been exiled. Exiled? It was a punishment, imposed out of necessity, but he accepted it all the same. He believed it was what he deserved. When the Abyss attacked, the tribes found themselves in urgent need of a powerful figure to lead them into the battle, and there was no one more courageous or resolute than him. He united the six tribes and accomplished great feats throughout the war. Ultimately, he perished, and because he had already lost his ancient name, the Ode of Resurrection was unable to bring him back. And so, he was laid to rest alongside the countless warriors and civilians who lost their lives, 
buried in the soil of his native land. Wow. He sounds like a true hero. <laughs> Indeed. Even now, his story is told throughout the land. The powder still needs some time to settle. So let's wait a little longer. Well, what do you think of my collection? Do you feel like you have a better understanding of Natland's culture now? Yeah! If each item represents a different story, seems like Natland's really been through a lot. Does every item hold a special memory, just like Atea's talisman? That's right. The items in my collection actually serve a similar purpose to the ancient names passed down among the tribes. They demonstrate the true shape of time. The shape of time? Most people perceive time as a linear concept, almost like a straight line that can only move forward. We cannot change the past or predict the future. But there's also a different theory, one that I believe to be closer to the truth. Namely, that the past, present, and future all exist at once. At once? Paimon's not sure she understands. Uh, let's say your journey ended right now. Thinking back on your experience in each nation, which one would you say was the most important? Exactly. Even at the end of your journey, the things you experienced along the way don't cease to exist. They become part of who you are. Take out a portion of that journey, and you would likely make very different decisions, and eventually arrive at a very different destination. The future is the same way. It exists even though it has yet to come to pass. We just lack the means to perceive it. Of of course, there are those with the power to foresee the future. They simply call it by a different name. Fate. <laughs> You're quite familiar with that concept, I would imagine. Uh, that does kind of make sense. The future hasn't happened, but already exists. Humanity excels at living in the present, but too often we forget the past and neglect the future. While the pilgrimage and the Night Warden Wars lead us to a better future. Only by uniting the people of Natlan across countless eras can we fight back against an enemy as formidable as the Abyss. To come up with such a set of rules, the first Pyro Archon must have possessed a level of insight I can only imagine. That's correct. At first, he was a mortal man with no special power. After he ascended to the Divine Throne, he used it to borrow power from the heavens and establish the rules of Natlan. Namely, a framework through which ordinary people can ascend to Archonhood. By holding the pilgrimage, we're able to determine the strongest among us. And when that person ascends to the Divine Throne, their inner flame will awaken. In addition, the Sacred Flame will grant them significant knowledge and memory of this land. After all, that's how I came to know everything I just told you. So, it all comes down to the power of the Divine Throne and the rules. Wait, is that a family portrait? <laughs> yes. That's my mother, father, younger sister, and the little Saurians we raised. I turned a piece of my dad's leather armor into a canvas and commissioned a famous artist to paint our likeness. Your sister is so cute! It looks like the two of you are really close. I'm always having a hard time thinking of an Archon as an ordinary person, but seeing this portrait, it kind of makes sense now. It really doesn't look like there was anything special about you before. 
Oh, wait, is Paimon allowed to say that? A little late for that question, don't you think? Sorry! Paimon's so sorry! Paimon's mouth works faster than her brain sometimes! <laughs> it's alright. I'd never get upset over something like that. No matter what others may say, my past is a precious part of my identity. I'm forever proud of the life I used to lead. Becoming the Archon doesn't mean you sever ties with your family. The position just comes with a lot of responsibilities, so it impacts how often you get to see them. My father made the most delicious stew, so my sister would often bring me a large pot of his cooking, and we would sit on a blanket and eat it together. One time, we didn't close the door securely, and the Saurians you were raising ran into the room and knocked over the entire pot. My sister immediately burst into tears. The two troublemakers were going for the meat, but when they saw my sister's distress, they froze on the spot. I still remember the way they laid there, sulking like a pair of children, even after making such a mess. It was frustrating, but in the end, all I could do was comfort my sister and move on. Wow. Isn't that what being a family is all about? <laughs> I think about that story a lot, actually. As the Archon, I made a vow to defend this nation. And experiences like that... They remind me exactly what I'm trying to protect. Well, what happened after that? This portrait looks pretty old. Your sister must be all grown up by now, right? I believe she ended up working as an architect and artist. She built many houses and crafted many beautiful works of art. Anyway, that's enough about me. Now that the powder is settled, we can begin. Iansan, Mulani, Chaska, over here, please. Place the ancient name up there, and then we'll begin. Surely, as the echoes of life resound through heaven and earth, so too shall our stories remain eternal. Ancient name, take us to your fated bearer. Allow her to answer our call. Uh, am I hallucinating again? Kachina, are you okay? Huh? I, I'm not seeing things, am I? Is... Is the Abyss playing tricks on me again? It's okay, Kachina. It's just us. We're trying to find a way to bring you back. Everyone, you have to listen to me. I've been investigating the Night Kingdom this entire time. And I figured out what's wrong. The Wyab is being affected by the Abyss. I was waiting for the Wyab to send me back, but then this really strong monster came in and almost killed me. The Wyab saved me, even though its power is weakening. So I've been hiding from the monsters while trying to find a way to help. The Night Kingdom has become a huge mess, though. I keep hearing these awful sounds and seeing really horrible things. Don't listen to those sounds, Kachina. The Abyss is trying to strip you of your sanity. All you need to do is stay safe and wait for us. We'll be there shortly. It's okay. I feel so much better now that I've had the chance to talk to you guys. You don't need to worry about me. I've never been strong or special at all, really. So I don't blame anyone for forgetting about me or leaving me behind. <laughs> Just knowing you care is more than enough. I'll find a way back. 
You don't have to put yourselves in danger to come rescue me. You're always like this, Kachina. Now's not the time to act tough. We're coming for you, and that's final. I don't know what lies the Abyss has been feeding you, but I'll tell you something right now. Nobody here sees you as a burden. You're a victor of the Night Warden Wars, a hero of Natlan. All you need to do is wait for us to rescue you, and you'll get all the applause and recognition you deserve. <laughs> All you need to do is place your trust in us, just like you always have. No one fights alone. We're not leaving you behind. Not ever. Yeah, we're so close, we can't call it quits now! Thank you. Be careful. Looks like we've lost contact. Now comes the most dangerous part. You have to traverse the Night Kingdom in your physical form. This entrance to the Night Kingdom was left behind after an abyssal invasion. Even a brief amount of time inside could expose you to corrosion. I know. I'm prepared for that possibility. All right. Then I wish you all the best. I'll tell Koichi to be ready just in case she's very experienced in dealing with abyssal corruption. That face you just made. Don't tell me you two got into another argument. No, I just feel bad for creating more work for her. I'll go with them too, Archon. The more people, the stronger the party. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. It really means a lot that you're willing to brave these dangers with me. And there's no time to lose, so let's get going. Now that I've lost my power, I won't be able to provide much practical support. But I can still keep an eye on the situation from here. Eon-san, I know it's unlikely, but if you encounter a situation you can't handle... That won't happen. I hope not. Be careful out there. I'll observe the situation from here. Organizing the loot? I'm an expert! Let's go, Twirly!
Hopefully this won't take long. So we're underneath Natland right now? It looks nothing like Paimon was imagining. That's because in the distant past, Natland was home to an incredibly advanced civilization ruled by dragons. Humans only established their own society after the fall of the dragons. So these are Saurian ruins? Wait, you mean like the Elemental Sovereigns? They had their own advanced civilization? Yes. A really long time ago. Very few records have survived until now, so no one really knows what the devices here are for. These ruins have been abandoned for a long time, but with the recent increase in Abyss activity, the installations around here have somehow been activated again. So what you're saying is... We're not in for an easy trip to the Night Kingdom. <laughs> no. It's going to be obstacle after obstacle from here on out. <laughs> Um, why are you all laughing like that? It's creeping Paimon out. It's the pre-adventure excitement kicking in, right guys? Of course. I'm eager to get started. Then let's go. We won't let anything stand in our way. Seems like the road ends here. How should we get across? As a professional trainer, I think you could stand to build up your endurance, Paimon. Professional trainer? Paimon thought you were a warrior from the Collective of Plenty. Well, that goes without saying. But I actually work as a sports coach. I provide professional guidance for many of Natland's popular sports. And I don't just mean physical training. I design nutrition plans as well. Ah, so basically no sugar, no soft drinks, no grilled meat. Yeah, yeah, we'll be here all day if you list them out one by one. It's much faster to just focus on what's good for you. Such as? Vegetable juice. Mmm. Want some? You know, Ian-san, Paimon feels like the two of us might not see eye to eye. Those guys look familiar. We fought them before. Let's go. Show no mercy. Things are about to get dicey. No escape! Share my knowledge! The place we need to go seems really high up. Yeah. 
quietly now. Hey! Mind the side effects. Shine down! <laughs> Game's up! Fun's over! I see everything! Gotcha. Things are about to get dicey. Mind the side effects. Seems like an emergency. Inazuma shines eternal! This is the final stretch. We just need to climb up, and we'll be there. Nothing to it. Easy for you to say. This must be the entrance the Pyro Archon told us about. The one ripped open by the Abyss. Yes. There's something in the depths of this place that feels familiar, yet also foreign. We actually have to go in there? Okay, Paimon just needs to psych herself up. Don't push her through before she's ready! Looks like we made it. This is the Night Kingdom. Huh. It looks so different from what I imagined in the stories. That overflow of energy is probably what trapped Kachina here in the first place. From this point forward, everything we know about the real world no longer applies. Anything can happen here. Paimon's more worried about how we're gonna make it out. We obviously can't go back the way we came. Do you see that patch of light on the ground? It's shining down from that fissure in the sky. Oh yeah, right in front of us. So that's coming from up there? Oh, it's so high up. Did we really fall that far down? Just like I said, our real-world knowledge doesn't apply here. 
We fell all this way, yet came out completely unscathed. If this was the real world, we'd have to climb our way back up to the entrance. But here, all we have to do is stand underneath the light and offer a prayer. Th that's it? You really think that little of Paimon? That's not even why Paimon asked! So that means all we need to do is find Kachina and bring her to this location. Exactly. This light is streaming in from the real world. It's a link between the two realms. Hmm. The terrain looks difficult to navigate, and the visibility is not great either. How are we supposed to find Kachina in these conditions? Yeah, these floating black things don't look super friendly either. Those are all manifestations of abyssal power. Be careful. Calm down, I'm here to help. You're the ones who helped Vichama, right? Yes, I'm Vichama's friend, Malko. I was completely lost to this realm until I sensed a mysterious power calling out to me. It's like it was seeking me out, attempting to reassemble the pieces of who I used to be. Of course, it could only do so much. I'm sorry I can only appear before you in this imperfect form. No. We should be the ones apologizing. If the Spirit Speaker Stone hadn't become corrupted by the Abyss, we could have done much more. But we had to destroy it. Otherwise, Bichama and his tribe would have been in danger. Of course. Thank you for protecting him. I never imagined that, even after all these years, he'd still take such a risk for me. Under the power of the Stone, it felt like our souls were connected. Turns out even our regrets were exactly the same. Whether in triumph or death, you want your best friend by your side. Exactly. That may not be in the cards for us, but it's not too late for you. You're looking for a young girl from the Children of Echoes, right? She's being chased by an embodiment of abyssal power. I'd like to help her while I'm still in this form, so follow me. Be careful. This place has been severely corroded by the Abyss. Paimon didn't realize it had gotten this bad. It's like a seething volcano ready to engulf our world at any moment. Ouch! Quick, get back here. Stick close to me. My power will be able to ward off attacks for the time being. We won't be able to keep this up. Let's try another route. This way. <laughs> Not good. More monsters. We shouldn't waste our time on them. Busted. Illusion shattered. Hey. <laughs> A bitter pill to swallow. Mind the side effect. Easy to get lost here. Just stick close. D did you hear that? What? Never mind. It was probably just my imagination. Don't scare Paimon like that! I heard it too. 
It was a voice from the abyss. What did it say? It doesn't matter. It certainly doesn't harbor good intentions. We're here, Kachina! Oh, honey! You made it! Looks like our reunion will have to wait until we take care of these monsters! Good idea! Let's go! Game's up! Fun's over! Escape. The doctor will see you. Taking a turn. Now you shall perish. <laughs> You're here. You're finally here. Thank you so much. That monster can appear from anywhere. It almost caught me a bunch of times. The Yup's power helped keep me hidden, so I just tried to stay out of sight until you got here. Had a girl. You did so well. And most importantly, you weren't hurt. Should we start heading back then? Actually, I have a request. Will you come visit the Wyab with me? I can't exactly put it into words, but something's wrong with the Ode of Resurrection. And I know it has something to do with the contamination from the Abyss. That was the Pyro Archon's theory as well. Everything we've seen here certainly seems to back it up. In the Night Kingdom, there are six main totem poles representing the Wyab of each tribe. You can think of them like the body of each Wyab. Additional totem poles, like the ones around here, serve as proxies to which the Wyab can extend their consciousness. There are countless proxies scattered around the Night Kingdom. Through them, the Wyab can extend their consciousness over the entire realm and track down souls no matter where they roam. But if a proxy were to become severely contaminated, then a soul could become lost within the Night Kingdom. Judging by the current situation, I don't think we're dealing with just one contaminated proxy. Even if we could drive back the Abyssal power from one of them, that probably wouldn't even put a dent in the problem. Still... We can't just leave the Wyab to suffer. It's protected me this whole time. I agree. We might even manage to draw out the monster that's been hunting Kachina. Getting rid of the monster might slow down the deterioration of the Night Kingdom. Uh, <sighs> Kachina? What's wrong? N nothing. Just a headache. And that voice again, telling me to abandon the Wyab and leave this place. Maybe we really should leave. Kachina's already been here for too long. No, I... I'm fine. I don't plan on listening to that nonsense. I can hold on. Just up ahead. I'll lead the way. Besides, I can still fight, so please. Help me out a little longer. Listen to me, Kachina. We'll come with you. But that's because we want to help the Wyab. Not because we have something to prove. You don't have anything to prove either. It's okay if you reach your limit. We'll be there for you. All right. The sooner we get this done, the better. We've already come all this way. So we might as well try to get to the bottom of this. 
Let's go. This way. I'll stay here and try to stall the Abyss Monster. All by yourself? That's too dangerous! It's all right. I may not be as strong as that monster, but I'm definitely more familiar with the area. Besides, I don't have much time left. If you're anything like my friend, I'm sure you're not particularly fond of goodbyes. So go. Achieve your goal. And return to the world where you belong. Thank you for everything. You're a true hero. <laughs> Thank you. No one fights alone. Does your head still hurt? Let me help you walk. I'm fine, I'm fine. You should know I'm made of stronger stuff than that. We were right. The contamination is already too severe. It's preventing the Wyab from answering our calls. All right, get ready, everyone. Time to purge the abyssal energy from this place. Careful. We've got company. Already? You really think that puny soul could slow me down? Courage in the face of futility is pure folly. He tried to get in my way, so I disposed of him. You... you killed Nalko? He would have dispersed with or without me. Rather than worrying about him, I would urge you to focus on yourself. You may have defeated others of my kind in the past, but underestimate me now, and it will be to your peril. No, the power of the Abyss is intoxicating. The destruction it seeks captivates like a masterful work of art. I strive only for the opportunity to see it up close. I thought this naive little girl was an exception, but it turns out humanity is full of lambs willing to offer themselves up to the slaughter. That is the tragedy of your short lives. You understand nothing of all-encompassing power. Ancient names, pride, friendship, all empty ideas invented to give you a false sense of self-worth. They possess no power at all. The Pyro Archon created those grandiose ideals out of pure selfishness. Anything to avoid sharing power. Anything to avoid handing over the primordial gift to ordinary people like you. Don't believe me? Then ask yourself, why is the Pyro Archon strong beyond measure, while you, Kachina, Remain so pathetically weak. I... I... Kachina! Give me your hand. Feel that? I'm right here next to you. Thanks, Moalani. You're right. I have nothing to fear. Because I'm not alone anymore! <laughs> You're right. Maybe comforting ideals don't have any power. But you also couldn't be more wrong. You've never had to work for your own strength, so you will never understand the true source of our power! What? The courage we have to stand before you and not back down? It comes from our friendship. 
The power lies not in the ideal itself, but in our commitment to upholding that ideal, and in our decision to stand together and fight! Well said! Let's go, Kachina. It shouldn't take more than two of us to handle an enemy like this. Sorry in advance, but you... You deserve what's coming to you! There aren't many in Natlan who can beat us when we're together. It's time he got a taste of that kind of power. From the ashes to this world. Off with Let's Ride! Amazing! Right here! That's what he gets for underestimating you two. Fantastic work, Kachina. Absolutely fantastic. This makes me so... unbelievably happy. I'm happy too, Moalani. Together we really are unstoppable. <laughs> huh? What's happening? My ancient name is... glowing? But I thought I didn't bring it with me! It's probably a projection from the real world. But that doesn't explain why it's glowing all of a sudden. Wait... does that mean you're... That was a bold move. Diving headfirst into the fire to save your friend. Especially in a place so overrun with abyssal corruption. Still, seeing you pull it off <laughs> was really something. Everything you said was exactly right. As isolated individuals, we stand no chance against the power of the abyss. It took years worth of scars and lots of unnecessary suffering for me to understand that for myself. The Pyro Archon's plan will unite us as one. Everyone has a part to play. Only then will we have the power to defeat the strongest of foes. Who are you? Tupac, a warrior from the people of the Springs. I fought against the Abyss during the invasion 500 years ago. I've heard that name before. You were the giant who saved all of Natlan. Since you were able to awaken my words from your ancient name, that means you have fully embodied the aspirations of the Wyov. Under the name Umoja, you shall unite the tribes and save Natlan from its impending doom. M me as long as blood still runs through your veins, even the tiniest spark of steel against stone can ignite a flame. Its blaze will become one with our vision for Natlan. Even amid everlasting darkness, our bonds remain eternal. That's what happened. What do you mean? 
Did you just figure something out? 500 years ago, they foresaw the very crisis we're facing now. Efforts to save Natland started all the way back then. We can go over the details once we get back. We shouldn't linger here longer than we have to. I know bits and pieces, but I had no idea Mualani was also part of the plan. This sounds like something that's going to need a lot of explaining. Let's focus on saving the Waya first. Okay, that should be enough. Why up? Why up? Can you hear me? I hear your voice, Kachina, my dear child. Great. Well then, I'm afraid it's time to say goodbye. I just wanted to make sure you were okay before we leave, but we can't afford to stay here any longer. I was going to ask why you bestowed an ancient name upon someone like me, but it's okay. I'll keep searching within myself for the answer. I'll never stop trying to improve my strength. One day, I'll live up to the hero you saw in me. You are already an outstanding child in my eyes, Kachina. No matter what happens. You are all my most beloved children. It has always been my honor to protect and nurture you. Your ancient name is just that. A name. Much like your parents chose to name you Kachina, I also gave you a name, but it need not define you. Focus on who you want to be. You are already worthy of your name. Now, you need only devote yourself to becoming a better you. The story of your ancient name is for you to continue. Just like your parents, my love for you will never change. No matter what the future holds. <sighs> Thank you, Wyub. It gladdens me to see the Pyro Archon's plan move another step towards completion. But it is time for you to leave this place. The situation here is getting worse. Go now, my children. Save Natlan on behalf of all you hold dear. I know we've never met before, Wyub, but I just wanted to say... Thank you for encouraging Kachina. It was exactly what she needed to hear. Whoa! What's going on? An earthquake? We're out of time. It's the power of the abyss. Quick, we need to run! It's a Sealy! The Sealy opened the way for us!
You've done well. Now come home. Pyro Archon saved us. But she's not here. Yeah, didn't she say she used it all up? She's still in the speaker's chamber. What we saw in the Night Kingdom was just her consciousness. So you're saying her consciousness did all that? Every great display of power comes at a price. <laughs> You must feel terrible, Kachina. Just hold on. We'll get you to a doctor soon. Let's get back to the stadium. The Pyro Archon said she'd have a doctor waiting for us. I recommend getting a full checkup. Just to make sure no damage gets left behind. Hi, Mom feels okay. What about you, Traveler? Right. You always seem to do pretty well against the Abyss. Let's get going. We need to share what we learned in the Night Kingdom as well. Right. The Wyatt mentioned something about the Pyro Archon's plan. What is it exactly? I'll let her explain everything. We're all a part of the plan now. Every move we make from here on out will decide Natlin's ultimate fate. a lot less stuff here than before. It's good to see you all here in one piece. I know you must have a lot of questions, but let Koichi check you over first. It's best not to let any lingering effects of the Abyss go untreated. Thank goodness you made it back. I came here as soon as the Pyro Archon told me about your plan. Take a seat, everybody. I'll examine you one by one. All right, that should do it for now. But just to be safe, I'll perform another checkup in a couple of days. I have to say, though, I've never seen anyone react to the Abyss like you, Traveler. It's like you're completely immune to its power. She's always been special like that. She can even purify its power. Wait, now that you mention it, Paimon doesn't think she's affected either. Given the current situation, that ability will likely play a great role in the events to come. Of course. I still have patience to see, so I'll head out. Thank you, Koichi. All right, all right. We might not see eye to eye, but we both had good intentions. Just give it time. I'm sure we'll figure things out between us one day. Yeah. All right. There's so much to discuss, I don't even know where to begin. You've seen it for yourselves now. The devastation in the Night Kingdom. I'll get straight to the point. Natlan is on the verge of destruction. It's very possible our nation has less than a year before total devastation. Huh? N no. That, that can't be true, can it? That's right. But I've only ever disclosed that fact to the handful of people working with me to save this nation. Our looming destruction is not a recent development, but the inevitable conclusion of the disaster the Abyss initiated 500 years ago. Luani told us a little bit about that. 
Five hundred years ago, all the nations of Tavat were invaded by the Abyss. Unlike the other nations, Natlan never had stable and deep-rooted ley lines, so we suffered the worst of the invasion. The battle against the Abyss was exceedingly long and brutal. In the end, victory came at the cost of our civilization and countless lives. Even then, it took centuries of solving the disasters caused by the Abyss to finally achieve the peace we know today. And still, this is but a superficial victory. The forces of the Abyss have merely been driven back underground. Their threat to Natlan remains as real as ever. I... I'd never have guessed. The problems plaguing the Night Kingdom are all the more complicated because that realm is essentially functioning as Natlan's ley lines. Immediately after the war, our calculations estimated that we would have a maximum of 500 years before the Night Kingdom was completely lost to the Abyss. But at that time, we were a nation of the destitute. Our people no longer believed in victory, nor did they hold hope for the future. Our civilization was dying, our faith crumbling, and the line of power passed down from the Wyab nearly severed. If we didn't bring the nation back together, it would be foolish to even dream of defeating the Abyss in the future. So, the Archon had a long and involved discussion with the heroes of each tribe, and finally came up with a 500-year-long plan to save Natlan. So that's what happened. After finding Kachina, I encountered a strange figure who gave me a series of new memories. Since the plan was mentioned in those memories, I guess I've been chosen to play an important role in it. But there's still something I don't understand. Those memories showed me the Pyro Archon from back then. And it was you. Huh? But that doesn't make any sense. The Pyro Archon is supposed to be human. It's impossible for a human to live that long. That's right. The hardest thing for humans to overcome has always been time. Or rather, the natural limitations of our lifespan. A god can extend a human's life by using a certain amount of divine power, or subjecting them to a curse. But, as we all know, Natlan doesn't have gods like that. We can only rely on our own methods. A human life is like a flame destined to be extinguished. 500 years ago, I placed my life within the sacred flame. Only by dying before my time could I have the chance to wake up again. So, in other words, this is your... second life? Yes. We only managed to defeat the Abyss all those years ago because the tribes came together as one. If the Natlan of the future was to have a fighting chance, the Pyro Archons that came after the war had to rebuild the decimated tribes, the goal was to reunite the people and restore the strength of each tribe's Wyab. Once a tribe was back to its full strength, the tribe's Wyab would select a hero, indicating the tribe was once again ready for war. The Chosen would then stand by my side in defense of our nation, just like great heroes of old 500 years ago. So that means I'm one of the Chosen? That's right. You bear the ancient name Umoja, the same one held by the hero from your tribe 500 years ago. It means unity. After your adventure in the Night Kingdom, I trust you've come to fully understand the meaning of that name. So in other words, you always knew who the Wyab were going to pick from each tribe? Yes. According to the plan, each tribe was supposed to have been fully restored by the time I awoke. But something went wrong along the way. The six heroes successfully inherited the ancient names from 500 years ago, but the intel regarding the plan wasn't passed on to them. Once again, it comes down to the deterioration of the Night Kingdom. Communication between the Sacred Flame and the Wyab has been blocked. Just like how the Ode of Resurrection failed to bring Kachina back. Exactly. It's just another tactic the Abyss is using against us. The Abyss may not possess intelligence, but its methods certainly aren't easy to counter. 
If we want to unblock that information from being passed on, my presence alone isn't enough. The ancient name bearer must establish a greater connection to their name. So, I've tried my best to help them from the sidelines. Currently, Shalonin of the Children of Echoes, Kinich of the Scions of the Canopy, and Iansan of the Collective of Plenty have all been acknowledged by their names. During your adventure, you too earned the acknowledgement of your Wyab Mu'alani. In the process, you gained the memories stored within your name. But we have less than a year! Yes, but we have no choice. We cannot start the plan until all the heroes have been gathered. That's also why I haven't been able to take action despite the urgency of the situation. But if you knew this whole time, why didn't you just tell me about my role in all this? Wouldn't that make everything go a lot faster? Perhaps, but the opposite could also be true. Knowing your destiny too early could mean failing to realize your full potential. Just like your determination to save Kachina, I hope your commitment to this endeavor comes from your own strength of will, rather than a sense of obligation. So I suppose you're not going to tell us who the final two heroes are then? That's right. Their time is yet to come. Putting pressure on them beforehand will only hinder their development. I can only trust in the judgment of the Wyab. I have never believed I could solve this crisis alone. In fact, it was precisely because I chose to trust and rely on others that we managed to get this far. Natland's salvation lies not in its Archon or any singular individual, but in us all. You're quite perceptive, aren't you? <sighs> I thought I might get away with avoiding the topic. Huh? Oh, right! All the stuff you stored here before, where did it all go? Even though I sacrificed my power, I still needed a contingency plan to ensure you would make it back from the Night Kingdom. After all, I was the one who allowed you to take that risk, and Mualani has an important role to play in my plan. In addition to their sentimental value, the items I stored here held a much more important purpose. Fuel. Fuel? Ah, oh, so back then, that's why you... Yes. The stories embodied by those items are certainly important, but there's an even more significant trait they all share. Every item belonged to a hero of Natlan. Over time, they became imbued with a certain amount of contending fire from being carried in battle. On their own, each item's power is limited. But together, their combined effect can prove quite useful in a dire situation. By burning those items, I was able to activate the contending fire stored within them to open the boundary between the two worlds. It was a rather crude approach, so all their power was depleted in an instant, as you can see. But aren't they all precious treasures? What about their stories? <sighs> That's exactly why I dragged you all here. No matter what, I never wanted the Pyro Archon to have to use that power. Oh, I'm so sorry. You have nothing to be sorry for. You all deserve my thanks, actually. If you hadn't saved the totem pole, that area of the Night Kingdom would have been forever lost to the Abyss. And then, it would only be a matter of time before the Children of Echoes was met with disaster. Besides, when those heroes entrusted their belongings to me, or the Pyro Archon of their time, it was out of a desire to contribute to Natlan's survival. If they knew those items helped save the present-day heroes of Natlan, they would not mourn their loss. Even when 
you put it that way, I still feel bad. <laughs> There's no need. Remember what I told you about time? The people and the events of the past are never truly lost to us. We simply carry them with us in a different form. In that sense, we didn't lose anything at all. If you still have regrets, let them fuel your resolve in the battles to come. Your deeds will become new legends and nurture new forms of power just like the items once stored here. Well, we'd still like to return the favor. <laughs> well, if that's the case, just treat me to a drink sometime. Now that Kachina has returned, we can finally hold the victory feast and celebrate your team's triumph in the Night Warden Wars. And we could all use the rest, that's for sure. Plus, you'll be able to silence everyone who doubted you once and for all, Kachina. <sighs> Still, now that I know the danger we're facing, having a victory feast doesn't feel right. Try not to let it get to you. It's important to stay calm. Worrying about it will only affect your judgment. All right. You should head out. I'll join you in a bit. When I was young, I used to sit by the hot springs and listen to the stories of warriors from all over Natlan. They attract people from all walks of life. Friends come easy here, no matter what tribe you're from. The people of the springs have never claimed the hot springs as their own private property. They are there to bring all hot spring buddies together. It's been really nice seeing the children of my tribe get older. It's helped me gradually understand the true value of the springs. I've witnessed their energy, their determination, their absolute passion for life. Ah, even when they cause trouble, I never manage to hold on to my anger for long. It's unbelievable how quickly they worm their way back into my good graces. I'm certain Mualani will become a great warrior when she grows up. She possesses infinite potential. I can see it. One day, when I'm no longer in fighting form, I'll come here and tell stories to all the children, just like those warriors did for me. So, you better get busy, Pyro Archon, or I'll end up running out of stories. <laughs> Our nation is engulfed in darkness. Our tribes stand divided, and yet you promise victory in the distant future. The Abyss is a cunning enemy, one that I faced in battle many times. Were that not the case, I would never understand exercising this degree of caution. My rage will never know absolution. Then my power will no longer aid you in victory. But you came to me because you knew you could convince me with just a single sentence. I understand your choice. The heroes of today will forge the path ahead with blood and fire. Just remember to earn us the victory we are owed. Otherwise, rest assured, I'll find a way to collect the debt. 
for Natlan. So, you're gonna head 500 years in the future to serve as the Pyro Archon again? But, what about the you from right now? You're just gonna die? You can't ask her those questions and expect her to answer, my dear. The decision is hers to make, and she deserves our support. We will do everything we can to rebuild the tribes. Don't you worry. Even across time, we will all do our part to fight for Natlan's future. Yeah, Mom's right. We'll always believe in you, sis. No, seriously though, Dad should be here. Where is he? I... I imagine he... He didn't know what to say, so he chose not to come at all. Don't take it to heart, my dear. That's just who he is. Just remember, no matter what happens in the future, we will always love you. I'll come find you one day. I know I can't live that long, but I'll think of something. Oh, there has to be a way for us to meet again one day. If there's an answer out there somewhere, I'm gonna find it. So, don't forget about me. If that's your decision, then you have my full support, Archon. May our children live to see such a lovely son. For Natlan! No one fights alone. The rules are my legacy. They shall grant us the strength to overcome the next tragedy. War forged the six tribes, taught us how to fight, instilled in us what it means to love. Who will be the one to bring this to an end? We are the inheritors of memory and legend. Those who grew alongside sun and wind. Those who forged our own destiny and future. That is Natlan's fire. The lifeblood of our nation. You here for the victory feast too? Oh no, I, I knew Chaska would be here, so I just came to deliver some medicine. I was about to leave actually. But uh, it's not that I don't want to celebrate Kachina and the others. I'm so glad she made it back, it's just... Well, I'll make things awkward if I'm around my sister right now. Ah, well, you two had a fight, so Paimon can understand. 
She didn't cause any trouble during your trip, right? Yeah, she was super helpful. She gave us a lot of useful information about the Abyss. That's good. That's all I needed to know. Is there a reason you asked? You were pretty outspoken when we first met, but now it's like you're holding something back. Uh, maybe it seemed unreasonable, picking that fight with her before you left, but I did it for a reason. Her impulse to fight is extremely strong. Her mental strength helps her rein it in, but she still loses control sometimes. I had no idea what you might face in the Night Kingdom, so I didn't want to take any chances. So, what you're saying is...
Okay, so maybe it sounds a little stupid, but it works pretty well. It helps her keep her cool for a little while, at least. Anyway, I'm just glad you were able to make it back safe and sound. That's all I wanted. What? Do you really have to go that far? Can't you just talk it out? No way. Chaska never opens up about her own pain, especially to her family. She can't learn about this. Or it'll be even harder to help her. I appreciate the understanding, and don't worry. I'll find a way to help her ease this burden. Anyway, I need to get going. Enjoy the celebration. Oh, and if you ever need a doctor, you know who to find. Huh. Who would have thought there was a deeper reason behind their arguing? In the end, it's all the abyss's fault. Paimon's had enough of them. Hmm. Let's give a huge round of applause to our brave young warrior, Kachina! Woohoo! Well done, Kachina. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad I finally made it. I always knew you could do it. With so much potential at your age, you have a great future ahead of you. You're one to talk. Don't think I didn't know you were the first person to abandon your team. I'll be dealing with you when we get back. I, I had no choice. My friend invited me. I couldn't just say no. Oh, really? So you weren't just trying to get ahead in the first round? I wasn't, I swear. I just happened to find that bearer injured in the wild. So I stopped to bandage his wounds. When he insisted on repaying the favor, what was I supposed to do? I'm just one person. I figured Kachina would have no trouble replacing me. But the fact of the matter is that after your departure, everyone else started thinking about swapping teams too. I'm really sorry, Kachina. It was wrong of us to abandon you like that. It's amazing that you still made it all the way through to the Night Warden Wars. That's the highest honor. So, uh... What about you guys? Did you make it far? Um... Our team captain drank too much the night before the competition and turned up late to the stadium on the day. We got disqualified. <laughs> Serves you all right. No sympathy for me. Alright, alright. There's no need to be like that, Uncle Pakal. Um, dear friends, I'd like to say a few words. Firstly, I'm grateful to my friends and our great Archon for helping to bring me back. This traveler and her companion Paimon are some of the strongest people I've ever met. If they were allowed to participate in the pilgrimage, I have no doubt that they'd win the whole thing. They've agreed to let me learn from them. With their help, I believe I can become even stronger still. And let's not forget my good friends, Moalani, Chaska, Kanich, and Dionsan. They all helped the Traveler and Paimon figure out a way to bring me back from the Night Kingdom. They too deserve to be called our heroes. So, please give another round of applause for them. Thank you so much. Well said! I'll drink to that! <laughs> How does it feel being a hero, Kachina? To be honest, it's a bit... 
bit overwhelming. It all just feels so... surreal. Well, you better get used to it! Next up, Undefeated Champion! Hey, please don't make fun of me. <laughs> My apologies. I knew more than I let on. Everything comes at a price, and most heroes aren't people who set out to become a hero. If you cling too tightly to your goal, you end up losing things that are far more precious. But in any case, we're now on the same page. I wonder how long before the two final heroes appear, from the Flower Feather Clan and the Masters of the Nightwind. Previous victory feasts, you'd always find me in the crowd singing and dancing. But after what I found out today, it's too much. I'm still trying to process it. It does feel weird seeing you so out of sorts. <laughs> Is this another pearl of wisdom based on your adventuring experience? Well, Paimon agrees with the Traveler. Everyone's come together to celebrate Kachina's achievements. That's gotta be a first. You're right. <laughs> Kachina looks really happy. And now I'm being the moody one. Ah, oh, enough doom and gloom. Time to shake it off. I've been through so much all at once. Everything still kind of feels like a dream. Are you still feeling unwell? Nope, all better now. <laughs> I told you I bounced back pretty quick, so don't worry about me. I bet you guys must be tired, though. Make sure you get some good rest tonight. You gotta recharge so you'll be in the mood to have fun. Alright, Kachina. Let's party! I... I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> Don't be! Come on, you're the star of the show today! us a lot but we got Kachina back safely and that's what matters there'll be even tougher challenges coming our way in the days ahead though we'll have to train harder make sure we're in peak condition that includes you Paimon I can do a special one-off session to show you the ropes interested I... no thanks It's rare to meet travelers as strong and brave as yourselves. I raised my glass to you. Anyway, my sister's already gone back to our tribe. She has patience to treat. Oh, we actually ran into her on the way here and, uh... Well... Paimon just thinks she really cares about you. Yeah, I'm planning on visiting home myself in a few days. To tell her and the rest of the family that they need to be extra careful. I just hope they take it seriously. The Abyss has likely sensed your arrival in Natland by now. So exercise caution on your adventures as well. Ah, oh, you're here. Have some fruit juice. I got it specially for you two. How did you know? That's my favorite! 
You look like you've still got questions. Ask away. Because they had their own lives to live. The thought of telling them, abandon your families and everyone you love, and come with me to the end of time, for in 500 years Natlan will be destroyed? It seemed too cruel. You could just as easily point out that everything in this world would come to an end eventually. But life is short. And beyond a point, it just doesn't seem real. Imagine if I said, let's leave right now and go save the sun because it'll flame out in a few million years. It would sound quite ridiculous. I couldn't make them shoulder that burden with me. Besides, every generation will have its heroes, this one included. The plan could still work without them. Or, of course, without me. But since I was the one who came up with the plan, I felt duty-bound to see it through to the end. Paimon suddenly remembering that portrait in your room. Was that your family from back then? Yes, it was. So when you asked me who my sister grew up to be, the truth is that very little information survives. From what I've been able to piece together, I can conclude with a reasonable degree of confidence that she ended up as an architect and artist. She played an instrumental role in rebuilding the scions of the Canopy tribe, designing and building many houses. But of course, um, none of her buildings are around anymore. Still, it was an impressive achievement, and I'm very proud of her. You feel lost keenly. It seems to stir up feelings of regret in you. But this is something I have long since come to terms with. This is a war, and there can be no war without loss. I am already far more fortunate than those who lost their lives to the Abyss. The people of Natlan look to me as their Archon, and the weight of their expectations is mine to bear. I must see our fate through to the very end, no matter what I may find there. The way everything ends has already been written, including your plan? I suppose, but so what? Don't forget, time takes many forms. The past, present, and future coexist, and all are equally important. Even if the future ends in destruction, there's still no reason to give up on the here and now. And it's precisely because we humans cannot know our fate that we will never give up on our struggle. This is a pivotal moment. We are still two heroes short. Well, three, to be precise. There's one further hero who I'm hoping to get on my side. Whatever it takes. Your resistance to the corrupting power of the Abyss is truly remarkable. It would easily make you an all-important figure in the upcoming battle. If you agree to join us, you will not only gain my full support in your journey, but I will also forge a brand new ancient name for you. Ancient names can be forged? They can. Several strict conditions must be met, but if they couldn't be forged at all, then the number of them in circulation would have long dwindled to zero. Possessing an ancient name would mean that your adventures in Natlan are recorded in full. Your stories would be remembered by our people for all the years to come. The Ode of Resurrection may have temporarily lost its power, but still, take this as my personal guarantee that I shall never let you fall. Just like in the Night Kingdom, I will be there for you. That is a promise I will fulfill at all costs. This nation always honors its heroes. Yeah, we can't just ignore the situation here. Wonderful. Then I'll reach out to Shilonen right away. She's the one who will forge the name. We've never forged an ancient name for an outlander before, but I trust she'll find a way. My lord, we've received word that the Pyro Archon has lost much of her power. Although your injury complicates things, this is most certainly the opportune time to seize the Gnosis. Victory and defeat are rules, not outcomes. 
I have never taken advantage of an opponent in a time of weakness, and I don't intend to start now. As for you, I must confess, I did not expect that little trick of yours to save the day. No matter how dense the fog, as long as the sun remains, we cannot turn day into night. She could have dispelled it. She simply chose not to. <sighs> you don't have much time, and you're injured on top of that. What do you plan to do next? I'm beginning to see just how useful you may turn out to be. You heard something from here, didn't you? Oh, um, something else you'd like to ask? Well, our intel suggests he hasn't made any new movements yet. Although Kenichi's investigation helped us confirm that he's being aided by someone from the Masters of the Nightwind. I'm getting closer to narrowing down who that may be, but it's still unclear whether this person aided the captain out of willingness or coercion. If you learn anything about this during your adventures, please let me know. Oh, um, something else you'd like to ask? The Abyss is the most formidable enemy in all of Tabat. In the beginning, it took failure and tragedy to even begin to learn how to fight back. All of the methods you've seen in other nations were developed based on experience and insight passed down over generations. We know them to work, but few of us actually understand why. It's the same for the method we use here in Natlan. Ever since ancient times, elemental energy has been one of our most reliable weapons against the Abyss. As for the principles behind it, I'm afraid you might have to seek answers from someone older than the position of Pyro Archon itself. Oh, um, something else you'd like to ask? Ah, that also comes down to the long-standing effects of the Abyss. Our people's survival is inextricably tied to the Wyab, but their power has its limits. They cannot offer our people the same degree of protection outside our borders. In fact, people who do decide to leave often suffer from memory loss and emotional issues. Everyone in that land understands this. That's why our people never leave without a good cause. Even if someone is left with no choice, the chief of their tribe must seek approval with the Wyab to grant them leave. And the Wyab have always been very strict about granting that approval, since extending protection beyond our borders means consuming power reserved for our fight against the Abyss. Still, there's no need to worry. The Wyab extend their protection to all within Natlan, including visitors from afar. Oh, um, something else you'd like to ask? <laughs> 